I'm Bill Ross and I'm head of special collections and archives here in the UNH library. Yeah, Lana Jacoby was a German expatriate uh, photographer. She came to the United States in, in 1935. Uh, before that, she had a very successful um, atelier in, in uh, Germany where she photographed a lot of the cultural elite. Uh, did a lot of landscapes, uh, photographs around Germany. Uh, and with the rise of Nazi, Nazism, uh, because of her Jewish heritage and her politics, she was kind of forced out both to protect her livelihood and her well-being. So, so she came to the United States in 1935 and kind of reinvented herself as a photographer uh, and became very uh, successful in New York for about a 20-year period and then in 1955 came to New Hampshire where she remained for the rest of her life. You know, Lada was, uh, as I came to, to learn, an extremely important photographer of the 20th century, port a portrait photographer. I'm Gary Sampson. I am the current uh, artist laureate of New Hampshire. Um, I worked at the University of New Hampshire from 1971 until the year 2000 and I served as the chair of photography at the New Hampshire Institute of Art for 17 years and retired um, about a year and a half ago. I, f I first came to know Lada when I was the filmmaker for the University of New Hampshire. I was looking for another project to make a film of and um, I was employed by the University Library in Media Services and one of the photographers, Jack Adams, suggested that Lotta Jacoby, a German photographer who was now living in Deering, New Hampshire, might be a great subject. Lotta agreed to uh, be the subject of a half an hour film and uh, it took about three years for uh, the university for me to complete, complete that film. That was really the start of a of a great friendship between Lada and myself. And so when the film was done, um, Lada said, you know, I, I have to make a decision about what I'm gonna do with my archive of 47,000 negatives. The Library of Congress showed interest, the University of Maryland showed interest. Um, she said that the Library of Congress, you know, um, it would take them 10 years before they could even start to process the collection. She says, I don't have 10 years. She was already in her, her mid 80s. She said, if the, university will allow you to work with me one or two days a week, then I will give the collection to the university. And that's how Lada's negative archive and subsequently her, 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 her paper archive came to special collections here at, at the university. And one of the challenges of the collection is, is not just the size, but also the format. Uh, a lot of the images before World War II are on nitrate stock, which is, uh, you know, very unstable, uh, and in fact can can catch on fire, you know, if, in, in large, uh, if it's not stored properly. And so what we're trying to do is to digitize a lot of those images so that uh, we can get, you know, an archival digital image that we can use and then we can store the original negatives uh, in a freezer so that they become more inert from, you know, further degradation. The significance of the Lotta Jacoby collection is really this, this documentary uh, portrait of, you know, pre-Nazi Germany, as well as the United States in the 20th century. And there's just this, this vast cross-section of kinds of photography, the subjects that she took. And, uh, you know, among 47,000 images, you can imagine just what's there. And I think uh, is not only in terms of preserving that, but trying to make it available uh, for public viewing. A lot of was just, so curious about the world. And um, she, she had this ability to um, get people to relax and open up in front of the camera. She, would, she, she talked about her experience photographing Marc Chagall, the great, the great painter. And she, she went to his studio, made some portraits of him and his daughter, Ida. And um, when she returned a few days later with the finished prints, Chagall said, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, 
that he, he was thinking that photography was just a kind of technical, mechanical medium. He says, he says, now I understand photography is art, what you've done with these portraits of me and, and, and my daughter. So Lada, Lada was, um, had this great skill in putting people at ease. Uh, she often said, I have no preconceived ideas about my subjects. I let them rule the frame, let them rule the photograph, let them be who they are. For a number of subjects, she actually photographed them over a great period of time. A lot of did an extended portrait of Albert Einstein that started in Germany but carried on through her time in New York when Einstein came to Princeton, uh, New Jersey. She made, I think, somewhere in the order of 150 or 160 photographs of Einstein, and they're intimate images. Einstein sailing, Einstein sitting in his leather jacket um, going through his correspondence. A lot of revealed, you know, Einstein the genius as this um, very human in individual who had, you know, had the desire to, to sail and to and, and, and take advantage of the, of the, uh, the, the basic pleasures uh, of life. Among the, the portraits that she took, she did a lot of work with publishers and doing authors' photos for, you know, dust jackets of books. And that was how, you know, I mean, we have people like Einstein and Robert Frost and, and others, but uh, that's how we came upon the photographs of J.D. Salinger. Uh, there is one particular image that was on the back of Catcher in the Rye that's kind of the iconic J.D. Salinger photo that, that everyone knows. Uh, and going through the archives, we found that there were over a dozen additional photos that really no one had ever seen before that is from that sitting. You know, I, I think the, the most fun that I have in working with this collection is, is to be surprised by some of the things that you find. I mean, you know, again, there are these, these really well-known photographs that you've seen in Life magazine and see online and see on dust jackets, but, but every now and then you'll find portraits of people you know here in Durham, or I, I think one of my favorites is a photograph that we have in the exhibit of Billie Holiday in 1937 with her musicians, and this was really before she really hit it big, uh, and the fact that, that Lada took her portrait, you know, with her band, um, and you know, I'm not sure that, that that photograph has ever been published before. So I, I think finding treasures like that is really what keeps you going and makes you keep digging and, and really appreciating the collection. It, it's so important that work of this importance is in an institution that can actually preserve it. You know, all these negatives are in archival sleeves, they're in fireproof saves, they've been cataloged, they're being digitized. So they'll be accessible to researchers and scholars. Um, many artists and photographers find themselves in a situation where their work isn't going to be preserved because it's not going to be in an archive that has the ability, like special collections, to, to preserve that work. So for me, it was, um, you know, uh, so important, my affection and friendship for Lada to translate into her work being preserved here because it's such important work that can be shared with people for generations to come.